going to follow up um, on that a little bit. She's a biology student in her third year at Illinois Wesleyan, originally from Libertyville, Illinois. Um, after graduating high school, Jenny took a gap year in Africa, which shaped her dreams of becoming a medical doctor. Her passions range from HIV and AIDS and women's health to increasing food security. Fundamentally, Jenny believes that healthcare is a human right, and she plans to use her medical degree to work with underserved people around the world. Welcome, Ms. I'm so sorry that I don't have this memorized, but um, I'm going to do my best to not use my script. Um, so today I just wanted to talk to you about some of the things that have kind of already been brought up and how I've used some of my life experiences to shape my future. Um, so I think society tells us a lot about the way that we're supposed to be, the way that we're supposed to act, the way that we're supposed to think, you know, all of these different things. And a lot of that when you were young um, has to do with how to plan for your future. I feel like looking at my educational history, it was always about what comes next. In middle school, it was all about planning for high school. And once I got to high school, it wasn't really about enjoying those years, but rather planning for college. And now that I'm in college, it's so much about planning for the future. What kind of job am I looking for? Graduate school, all of these different things. And I don't think that there's much advice about enjoying the, the part of life that you're in right now. Um, I was never told about taking a gap year or even you know, considering that as an option, but I think that there's a lot of value in that for a lot of people. Not to say that everybody needs to take a gap year, but um, I think being able to enjoy this spot that you're at in life of being really young and pretty naive about a lot of the world around you, there's so much to capitalize on that moment in life that you don't get back if you decide to take time off later. Um, so the way that that kind of developed in my life was I had this mentor in high school that I met through my church, and she really had a profound impact on my life. When I look back at high school, I don't know where I would be without her. Um, and one day, she was talking to a few of my friends and I about... Um, this one girl was interested in doing the Peace Corps, and so she was suggesting this other organization that her friend had done called Mercy Ships. And that girl was not interested at all, but something about that was really interesting to me. So I was kind of listening, and that night I did a little research, and I was really curious about this organization. So I submitted a quick application, thinking nothing's ever going to come of this. I don't need to tell anybody. And the, the organization contacted me back, and they were interested, and asked me to get a physical and all these things. So I was like, oh, gosh. I should probably tell my parents about this. <laughs> so I sat down one day with my parents, and this was my senior year of high school. Everybody in my hometown goes from high school to college. It's kind of an expectation. There's not really flexibility in that. And so I sat down and I said, hey, uh, I think I should go to Africa for a year next year. My mom was like, what? <laughs> and my dad was like, no. And I was like, OK, that's fair. I just asked if I could, at 18, move across the world by myself. Having never lived away from home before, I, I understand. But I was like, hear me out for a second. I think that if I was to do something like this right now, it could be really important. It could be really um, transformational in my life to be able to explore the world when I'm so young. And my dad's first legitimate response to that was, you, you would see things that you just can't unsee. And I don't think that you understand that. And I said, OK, I think you're probably right. I don't know what I would see. But I think I'm willing to explore that and to see. And so, as a family, we talked a lot about what this would look like. You know, the small parts of it, missing Christmas and Thanksgiving and my birthday. And some of the bigger things, like what would happen if an emergency happened while I was abroad? What would happen to me? What would, if something happened in my family, you know, could I come back for that? How does that work when you live across the world and flights can cost $2,000 to get home? So, there was a lot to consider, and it wasn't a decision that we made lightly. But ultimately, we decided that, that it was an important time to go for me because I had so little to give up. Um, I wasn't giving up a job or a mortgage to figure out. You know, I didn't have a spouse or kids to, to sort out. Um, and I could quite literally pack up my life into two suitcases and just move. And then when I came back, I knew that I would be able to, to pick up where I left off um, a little bit. So I left. My parents took me to the airport in September. 
and left me at security. And I remember being so scared, much more scared than I anticipated. I think I'm naturally a little bit of a risk taker. I'm comfortable with that, but this was different. You know, I was walking through those um, security gates and leaving them there, and I remember looking back and seeing them so scared and so sad. They were just hugging each other, and that was so hard for me, but at the same time, I watched them be really brave for me um, and, and be really strong because they knew that I needed that and they knew that this was so important to me. And so I cried a lot on the flight over. You know, you're kind of just stepping out into this big unknown and you don't know what anything is going to be like. And I said goodbye in September and I said I'll see you in June. So that's a long time to go. Um, and it wasn't, it wasn't easy all the time. I, I wish that I could say it was, but it wasn't. It was hard a lot of the time. Um, when I first got there, it was so different than I expected. And I don't know what I expected. I had never done anything like that. But um, there was a lot of things that were just a huge adjustment, figuring out how to be independent and live alone. And then some of the, the more tangible, difficult things, like seeing so many people suffer and specific um, patients and stories that I encountered that just broke my heart because they were so unfair. You know, spending time in children's hospitals with people that were my age that were going to lose their child because their child had, you know, parasites or was dying because they were so hungry. And just looking at how unfair that is that we're the same age and our lives look so different. Um, and I remember one conversation that I had with my mom. I, I would try to call home every couple of weeks to get updated on what was going on back in America and kind of give them an update on my life, which was so different. Um, and I remember telling my mom, I was trying to explain, you know, what I had been seeing, and I just broke down inexplicably in tears. I was so heartbroken at the things that I had been seeing, and it wasn't really something I could articulate well. I was like, I don't know why I'm crying. And looking back, it was just that the experience was so complex for me. There was so much about it, you know, so many parts. There was corruption and you know, privilege and all these things colliding that made my experiences very real and raw. And I used that moment and a million others like it to build up what I want for my future because I think there's so much value in those experiences and learning what is going on in other places in the world that I needed to learn in order to start learning for my future, if that makes sense. So in order to start my college experience, Having that foundation has been, you know, invaluable. I can't put a price on that because it shaped me in like every way possible. Um, and I, I have specific people in mind when I'm working hard in school and everybody else around me wants to give up because it's so hard. I have people to think about and, and remember and that helps me move forward. Um, so I challenge you all to take big risks like that. I think most of the the experiences that I've had that have truly transformed my life came from big risks that had big uncertainty with them. And that has been so important for me to see that both I can handle these big things, and I think that we all can. We don't cut ourselves enough credit when it comes to that. We, we were a lot stronger and more brave than we like to believe. You know, you see an opportunity and you, you kind of dismiss it for any number of reasons, but I think that we can handle these things. We, we can if we let ourselves, and so um, that's kind of my, my story for all of you that, that take big risks and, and be bold and brave in them because a vigorous, adventurous life is so much more meaningful and will help you so much more in your future than this mundane kind of safe attitude. Um, so to close, I think looking back at my dad's advice, he was absolutely <coughs> that I would see things that I couldn't unsee. I mean, I have loads of stories of those types of things, but I think at the end of the day, I'm so glad that I can't unsee them because they shape every part of me moving forward. So thank you so much.